and are we? Yeah, yeah, Oh, did you see Keith? Yeah. I did too. Yeah. He was kind of a last minute ad, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Speaking order. Okay, great. Um, they added a chair. They did. Next to the recipients. Good morning, everyone. We're, we're so thrilled to have all of you here to celebrate um, the loan repayment program. This is a historic investment by the state of Massachusetts. Um, and I know that here at, at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, um, it's just so much needed. I know we have eight of our 10 recipients here um, to celebrate um, the awards that are, are coming today. But we're just so grateful to everyone. Um, I also would say I want to thank the staff who helped organize this. I was I just came out of um, a tent in Maine, sleeping on the ground. <laughs> no electricity, no cell phones, no email. So it was really great. Um, and so I got to go home last night and have a shower and sleep in my own bed. And I walked in and everything was ready. So thank you to everyone um, for that. Um, so I'd like to welcome um, our elected officials who are here, um, Lieutenant Governor. Um, the secretary, Kate Wall, Secretary of Health and Human Services, um, Mayor Bob Sullivan, who we'll see in a moment, um, and members of our state delegation. So thank you for coming and helping us celebrate this, this wonderful event. Um, and I also want to thank the staff. Um, we've been through a lot together um, over the last four years, let's say. Um, so many of the recipients and many others in the room were the heroes in COVID um, set up testing sites, vaccination sites. Um, I accidentally took um, five 18-wheelers of testing kits all at the same time, and they dealt with that too. Um, so it's just, been, um, it, it's just been an amazing thing for this team to come together. And then just as we thought we were coming out of it, Brockton Hospital burned um, and closed and is still closed. Um, so our staff stepped up then too to um, really ramp up the services and the acuity of the patients we were seeing, and especially trying to make um, accommodations for our, our patients with behavioral health needs. So thank you all for that. Um, and then if that wasn't enough, um, just a month or so after that, a substance use treatment 
um, chain in Massachusetts was closed, including a site in, in Brockton. So um, we stepped up for that too, and now we're caring for some of those patients. Um, then you probably all heard that Compass Medical closed, um, impacting 70 to 80,000 patients. Um, and then just most recently, immigrants or refugees coming in, and in many cases, several cases of TB, active TB, that we're starting to see as well. So um, that's been a lot, and um, it really is a tribute to our staff that we've been able to do our best anyway to rise to the occasion, and our capacity is, is pretty strained. Um, but this program, this loan repayment program, is helping us address that issue because um, we have uh, 10 recipients who, you know, are, are going to get help with their loans and will stay in community health through that period, and um, we're really just so grateful um, for all of that. Um, and at the same time, we know that health centers don't pay as much as other facilities. So um, the loan repayment that's helping all of you stay here, I'm sure all of you are, are thrilled to be recipients um, in this program. Um, but you're here, and, and we're all here, because we believe in, in the health center model of care and the mission. Um, at the same time, a lot of health centers, including ours in Massachusetts, are struggling financially. Um, we had money to support us through COVID at, at BNHC. It was, um, we're get, estimating it at about $42 million in COVID funds came in, um, and now that's gone. Um, and part of what we did as that funding came in was we increased salaries of staff to um, re re retain and um, reward staff and to recruit new staff um, during what became really a worldwide staffing shortage in healthcare, so or at least United States. So um, we still have that money to spend. The salaries are still um, have been increased, and the money's gone. So uh, it's a tough time for all of the health centers in the state. So because of that, having money for loan repayment, we're really thrilled um, that that can add to the salaries that we're paying. Um, and that's why this funding is such a big deal today. So thank you all for coming. Um, and the funding recognizes the, contri the contributions not only within our health center, but health centers across the state and other eligible facilities. So we're really thrilled um, th with the timing of this coming, you know, right as, right as we're kind of getting back um, into the fall, um, hopefully not back into COVID, but, you know, really um, appreciate it. Um, so we can't thank the legislature enough for um, for this investment in community health. Um, and the Healy and Baker administrations both played major roles in this rollout, so thank both of them. Um, and um, just want to acknowledge at the end our own staff for all the work you do every day, so thank you. Um, so now with that, I'd like to bring up my my friend and colleague, Michael Curry. Michael is the president and CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers and a Brockton resident. <laughs> and uh, Michael and his team had a lot to do with making this all happen as well. So Michael Curry. Thank you, Sue. So uh, one is I want to join Sue in just giving credit to the folks here at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center and all the health center staff across the state uh, who understand deeply the importance of these investments. Um, like Sue, I was on a few days vacation and in Martha's Vineyard. I wasn't in Maine, but I was in Martha's Vineyard. And the ferry was running late this morning, so I thought I was going to have to swim <laughs> <laughs> to get here on time because I couldn't miss this press event. Uh, so I want to say thank you for, for all of you being here. On behalf of the Massachusetts League Community Health Centers, I want to thank Sue Joss again, the entire team at Brockton Health Center for allowing us to be here today in order to celebrate this historic investment in the Commonwealth's primary care and behavioral health workforce. And as she said, a proud, a proud Brockton resident, I want to welcome the Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Walsh, and so many other dignitaries to what we affectionately call the City of Champions. Yeah, who's going to clap on that? <laughs> Um, and, and this is not in anything I've prepared, but I've had the chance since I moved to Brockton to work for several mayors in Brockton. Uh, when I moved here, Mayor Bozzotti was mayor, became good friends with Mayor Bozzotti. Uh, mayor Carpenter uh, became good friends with Mayor Carpenter and actually ended up speaking at his uh, funeral service. And then uh, had a good friend invite me to meet with the incoming mayor uh, at her house, Pat Monteith. 
Uh, and I am very proud to call uh, Mayor Sullivan a good friend of mine as well. So give you a round of applause for Mayor Sullivan. <laughs> they put me to work as soon as I moved to Brockton. <laughs> as you know, the Massachusetts League Community Health Centers, in partnership with the Massachusetts Executive Office of Health and Human Services, this week announced the recipients of $140.9 million. That's million dollars. in loan repayment awards through the Mass MA Repay Program. At a time when health centers and our peers in the safety net are experiencing crisis level primary care and behavioral health challenges, this funding is right on time. It represents a monumental commitment to stabilizing the workforce in high need communities, especially those impacted by COVID-19. This funding was intentionally focused on fostering a dedicated, diverse, diverse workforce who can serve the primary care, behavioral health, and substance use disorder needs of communities across the Commonwealth. Services that have long been underinvested in within our healthcare system. A quick word on community health centers. Health centers treat the whole patient. They assess and work to address social determinants of health and integrate care across teams to ensure patients are getting the best possible health outcomes. Across the state, health centers bring this proven high quality model of care to over 1 million patients a year. As we speak, health centers in Massachusetts are dealing with an unprecedented workforce crisis at a time when pent up demand for care and services is at an all time peak. This is constraining access to essential preventive services. As just one example, the average time frame for a new patient to obtain routine primary care visit is currently 80 days. That's about two and a half months. And yet, health centers continue to meet the moment. They are there for their communities and answer the call every time. This is why we are ecstatic to be here today to celebrate this MA Repay Program and the statement it makes by our legislature, our governor and lieutenant governor, our secretary of health and human services, and the entire Healy administration. That is, we won't stand by as access becomes a barrier to care, nor will we tolerate inequities in access to care. Bold action like this is warranted. As we stand here today knowing that there will actually make, this will actually make a difference. This program will keep desperately needed providers in communities that need them most, like Brockton. In December 2022, several groups of healthcare professionals were invited to apply for student loan repayment in exchange for a service commitment behavioral health and primary care providers, child and adolescent psychiatrists, and substance use treatment professionals. Qualified applicants had to work in specific settings and hold specific credentials or roles. Ultimately, 2,935 providers have received award letters, with nearly 45% of the awardees self-identifying as a person of color. That's worth a round of applause. Within the individual categories, 140 psychiatrists, 167 psychologists and primary care providers, 1,323 master level mental health and primary care professionals, 709 bachelor's level mental health and primary care professionals, three child and adolescent psychiatrists, 62 inpatient psychiatric mental health nurse practitioners, 136 inpatient mental health workers, and 395 substance use disorder treatment professionals were awarded funding. We are incredibly grateful to work alongside the Healy Driscoll administration, the Massachusetts legislature, the city and town officials, all of whom had a hand in making this impactful program possible. Lastly, to those receiving these awards, thank you. Thank you for serving our communities every day. From Brockton to, to the Cape, to the North Shore and Springfield, to Hilltown. From Worcester to Boston, you are quite frankly saving lives. You don't do this for the glory, and we know that you don't do it for the money. You do this work because of your commitment and passion to providing care. You showed up throughout COVID-19 and every day before and since. However, with this announcement, we truly hope that this loan relief makes a real difference in you and your family's lives. And now, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Many of you may not know, but she was born in Hawaii, 
proud daughter of a U.S. Navy veteran, and our prayers and our thoughts are with Hawaii right now. Our lieutenant, governor family, our lieutenant governor's family eventually moved to Salem, where she graduated from Salem State College. She then earned a Juris Doctor from the Massachusetts School of Law. She went on to be deputy city manager of Chelsea for five years, and then returned to Salem, where she was elected mayor, taking office in January 2006, and was then re-elected to the position three times. In 2009, she won with over 80% of the vote, a testament to her vision and ability to build consensus, as well as her willingness to tackle complex problems. In January of 2022, she, was declared, she declared her candidacy for Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts and won the general election last fall along with her friend and federal, fer, fellow baller. <laughs> I had to make one at least basketball reference during this introduction. Uh, Governor Mara Healy. On January 25th, or January 5th, 2023, she was inaugurated as the 73rd Lieutenant Governor of Massachusetts. It goes without saying that when Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll sets her mind on something, she goes after it with a certain level of unmatched tenacity. Today, there are nearly 3,000 medical professionals, along with many people in this room who are committed to health care in the Commonwealth and grateful to you, both you, Lieutenant Governor uh, Driscoll, as well as Governor Healy, and so many others for coming together and helping to secure the critical funding needed for the MA Repay Program that will benefit so many. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. We hug you. Thank you, Michael, for that wonderful introduction. And what a happy day this is, uh, not only to be here in Brockton with my friend, Mayor Sullivan, but to be here with all of you to celebrate what we think is such an important investment. Um, I do want to recognize Secretary Walsh. The last time we were here, we were here together with you, Sue, as well, and the governor uh, as a new pharmacy was opening up. And it's great to see it humming along and in service to so many in the community and the region. It's always great to be here with legislators. We wouldn't be here in making this investment without the support of Representative Michelle Dubois, Representative Tom Stanley. I know there are other representatives who couldn't be here from the region. Just want to thank you for taking time out, not only to be here to share in this, but for the work you did and put in to make sure we could make these sorts of investments. The, the fiscal jurisprudence is necessary. Appreciate that. And I, I definitely want to say a word to all the nurses and medical assistants, doctors, therapists, primary care providers in the room. Like, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for the work you do every single day, not just here in Brockton, but frankly across this Commonwealth, in community health centers, in large healthcare settings, in small places. Um, without you, I think these last three years would have been absolutely impossible. I say that as someone who was the mayor of a community on the front lines during COVID, uh, in t speaking to healthcare professionals every single day and knowing how tough that was. Um, been a really challenging last few years and even more so, but for um, the healthcare workers. And I just want to also offer a nod to the challenges that all of you face, the ups, the downs, um, that you've been confronted with, you know, the worst pandemic most of us have seen in our lifetimes. And with that has come your own burnout and reservations, and we're seeing this in the entire medical field. But you get up every single morning, you come to work, intent on making people better. And I think all of us are grateful for that. I see it with my own eyes. I have a daughter who's a first year nurse. She was a, a CNA while she was working her way through, um, through nursing school. And heard, I heard the stories then, I hear the stories now. And um, these career paths, I really believe, are noble ones. Um, even when we're in the darkest days of a pandemic, um, she found a way to smile and to, to make sure that um, thinking about the ways that you're giving back. So we just wanna say thank you. And I think it's just one of the reasons that we're, we, all of us, but particularly me, are excited to be here to announce over $140 million in student loan repayment for close to 3,000 primary care and behavioral health providers. $140 million, close to 3,000 people aided and assisted by that. And, and a word on just who those folks are. 45% of the individuals who are receiving student loan repayment through the MA Repay Program are people of color. 70% of the awardees work full-time in community-based settings, like this one. 70% are women. 
47% are under the age of 35 at a time we want to make sure our young adults, this next generation, can launch and be here. And more than 900 awardees speak another language in addition to English, uh, really helping ensure that we have equitable care. Talk about meeting people where they are, right? This program will, will, pro, uh, will be a lifeline for thousands of healthcare providers in Massachusetts. It'll break down those barriers that our healthcare uh, providers often face, open up the workforce and opportunities to grow in this profession, especially at a time when we're seeing a severe shortage of healthcare workers, as Michael laid out. Governor Healy and I recently signed our first annual state budget. Obviously, it included funding for MA repay, allowing every applicant, every single applicant, to receive a repayment award. That, for us, was pretty special. You don't want to be at the end of that line missing out. And in the coming months, we'll be expanding the program with another $100 million of funding so that more healthcare professionals can apply. That's good news for those folks who uh, didn't get their applications in in this particular round. Not only will this funding positively impact the health and well-being of Massachusetts residents, but we firmly believe it's going to strengthen our economy, our competitiveness, promote equity, and particularly within the healthcare profession. In addition to this budget, uh, in addition to this funding within the budget, we're also proud to be able to support, with our friends in the legislature, funding for Mass Reconnects. So a free community college program for anyone over the age of 25 who doesn't already have a degree. This includes uh, tuition, fees, books, supplies. So think about it. We've got funding to support repayment of student loans for anyone who's been through a university or a college. We're also investing in this generation to make sure they're not racking up that debt, that they're providing that access to education. We really believe these investments on the front end and the back end, on the back end programs like these, those, these are the ones that are going to strengthen our state, our workforce, introduce talent that may not have had the opportunity within the healthcare industry before. And look, our healthcare workers are some of our hardest workers, and Governor Healy and I want to make sure we're committed to supporting you in any way we can. I was speaking earlier with some of our recipients. Congratulations to all of you who are here who work here. I'm feeling like, is this kind of like a publisher's clearinghouse moment? Like, what are you going to do with the resources? But the reality is, it's not a random knock on the door. We're reinvesting in all of you who are helping care for neighbors. We're reinvesting in the individuals who are helping us heal. We're reinvesting in strengthening our communities by providing the type of health care we need on the ground every single day. <laughs> I can't think of a better way to utilize public funding than to reinvest in ourselves keeping us healthy, keeping our community strong, and building a next generation that will have the type of access that we want. Competitive, equitable, more affordable Massachusetts. I'm so grateful to be with all of you. Congratulations to our recipients. Yeah, do you mind? All right. I'll let you say a few words, too, if you want to. Um, I have the distinct pleasure of uh, being able to introduce Congressman Lynch, and I'm so grateful to be able to do that because I think the Congressman has been such a strong advocate and supporter of public health institutions, particularly our community health centers, understanding what it's like on the ground. Many of us got a better understanding of what community health centers do every day during the pandemic. But those of us who have been in the trenches working either in local government or supporting our neighborhoods have known for a long time the important work that goes on in community health centers. North Shore Community Health Center in Salem, I'll, I'll put in a plug for, uh, for my hometown group, that every single day we're working on food insecurity, that every single day we're working to provide better health access. We're doing the sort of work that a, a light was shown on during the pandemic. Folks in community health centers have been doing that for a long time. I know that. Congressman Lynch knows that. So grateful to have you as a partner in Washington assisting us in this effort, and so thrilled that you could be with us today to share in this very much celebratory moment. Congressman Steve Lynch. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. And it's great to be part of the Brockton delegation and uh, enormously proud of the work that's being done here each and every day at Brockton Neighborhood Community Health Center. Uh, you know, I remember my first visits, uh, actually not here, but uh, during uh, Mayor Unit's uh, administration, we had a trailer behind St. Patrick's Church, and I remember with him climbing, it, I mean, today's waiting room was busy, 
but uh, back then it was really, really, it was, it was overwhelming the amount of uh, patients that were waiting to be seen. And uh, I know today's uh, uh, build up in the, the, the crowd that we have in the waiting room downstairs, if, if those of you who came up that way, um, most of that is to recertify people for insurance, right? We're going through that process right now statewide. So that's why we saw the congestion this morning in the, in the waiting room. But, but this is a highly subscribed and, and uh, enormously important uh, center for this community. This is the epicenter, really, for, for health care in, in Brockton. And uh, as someone who's been a, a longtime supporter of not only Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, but also across the state, I really appreciate the, the wonderful uh, work that's being done and, and the sacrifice that's being made by our employees here today. They, they, our staff is really, uh, they're the secret sauce here. They're, they're what makes this all work. During the pandemic, I, I was keeping count at one point, I, we had 80, uh, 80 employees from the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center who came down with COVID that were, were diagnosed. I, I don't know what the final number was that, but we were up around 80 employees. These are people who are coming to work every day, trying to help other people, trying to save other people. Uh, we had a very high fatality rate here in Brockton, especially among people of color. So there was a real ur sense of urgency here to, to respond. And I'm just so proud of the way that uh, we've been able to work together, not only with uh, Mayor Sullivan's administration, but also with the Healy Driscoll administration and making sure that the federal resources are used properly. So the way this works now uh, through the federal government, both through the CARES Act and through ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act is, what we did was because so many states were in different places, uh, we, we couldn't, we, we couldn't uh, dictate from Washington how each state would, would use their money. So we got billions of dollars. Uh, in the CARES Act and in ARPA for Massachusetts. But what we said was because Mississippi was in a different place, in, in many cases some of these red states were denying the existence of, of COVID. They were denying the fact of the pandemic. So how do you do that when, when you have, a, even, even with the Baker administration previously, they understood that this was a health crisis. So the only way we could do this and feel that the, the federal money was going to be used properly was to leave it up to the mayors, leave it up to the governor and lieutenant governor to decide how that money was going to be spent. And that was a wise decision for, for the people of Massachusetts. So the way this works now is that the, the ARPA money, the CARES money has all been uh, designated, but the ARPA money, uh, the, the responsibility for where that money goes and, and this idea of funding uh, uh, loan reimbursement and loan support for people who are providers. So, so, so that's important. The people who are receiving these benefits through the state are people who actually provide medical services directly to patients. So it's not for, not for administrative issues and things like that, which are important in themselves. But this is really to incentivize young people to, and, and not so young people, to make a commitment to, to places like Brockton. And so we're so thankful to the recipients who are here. Uh, not only are they, are they chosen to do good work, but they've chosen to do it here in Brockton. They recognize the need that is here, and they're, they're paying forward uh, for the opportunity that they, they have here. And uh, I'm just so thankful for the, for the entire team here. Uh, you know, Mayor Sullivan is, is a personification of, of uh, the city of Brockton. He's a fighter, dear Lord. Uh, you know, he is relentless, and uh, we need someone like that here. And it, and it matches very, very well with the spirit of our governor and our lieutenant governor. Uh, they're fighters as well. They are, they are relentless in their own right. And it, it's, it's a, a pleasure to be part of that team. And uh, I know the work that's been done, being done every single day here at local community health centers. My wife is a, is a 25 year employee of the South Boston Community Health Center. I know what it's like to live and serve in a city of, of immigrants. You know, um, a few years ago, I'm down in Washington, D.C., 
And uh, my wife calls and says, uh, we had some visitors this morning at my house on G Street in, in South Boston. So the houses are all attached. You gotta, you gotta fight for a parking spot out front. So it's, it's definitely urban living in South Boston. She says, I had a family uh, on the front stairs this morning. And uh, I said, yeah. She said, well, they're, they're, they're new, new immigrants. They turned out to be from Albania. Not one of them, three generations, from the grandmother and the grandfather to the, the, the daughter uh, to the kids. Three generations, Albanians, right off the boat, as they say, from Albania. Not a, n not a word of English did they speak. But fortunately, my wife, being an employee of the uh, South Boston Community Health Center, uh, was able to walk them, because we, we only live several blocks from the health center there in South Boston, walk them down and uh, hand them over to the Albanian interpreter uh, at the South Boston Community Health Center so they could begin that journey. And I, I thought about my, my grandparents, my great-grandparents. That's probably the same experience they had coming to this country. It's just a different group, just a different group. And so that's what we have going on here at the, at the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center every single day, families of immigrants. So you, go, you go downstairs and you talk to some of those patients that are waiting in that, that waiting room. That's their story. That's, that's the beginning of their journey. And so people, people forget that, that health centers are making that connection for us welcoming people and not only providing great health care but but interpreter services food pantries because so many of these families are food insecure and and again I, i'm just so glad that we've got a wonderful team that gets that uh from the very top from from our governor and lieutenant governor uh to um, our members of congress to our house delegation and senate delegations here in, in Brockton, part of the Brockton delegation, and, and certainly our mayor, who, who is our quarterback, our quarterback on, on our team every single day. So uh, grateful to be here. Again, I want to I want to thank Cara and Michael and Linda for your your sacrifice and your commitment to this community. You are shining examples of what's best about Brockton and what's best about America. Thank you very very much. So I want to uh, echo the appreciation for the congressman. Uh, I've been at the Masters League of Community Health Centers now almost 16 years. Uh, and when I first started at the league, Jim Hunt, my predecessor as CEO of the league, took me to DC and he walked me through Congress and he took me into Congressman Lynch's office and he said, stay close to him. Uh, and I remember this because he said, he's a staunch advocate for what we do. And he's been that since I came to the league. That means when we come down to visit him, he's in the meeting. Uh, when we talk about the issues and we need sign on to appropriations letters, he's one of the first to sign on and always. And, and I was in Martha's Venue, one of your former staffers, by the way, Shana, and now we're oh. at Nancy's grabbing uh, food. <laughs> um, and we talked about uh, your leadership and service. So Congressman, thank you. The other thing I appreciate about you is um, your humble beginnings, the, the child of an iron worker, a uh, mother who worked in a postal, uh, postal office. Uh, and I, I tell people I'm from a housing project. And I don't shy away from sharing that, that I come from a project. Um, there's a Frederick Douglass quote I, I love, which it says, it's not just the heights you reach, but the depths from which you come. Speak a lot about who you are. So thank you, Congress. Another round of applause for our Congress. <laughs> I had a chance to meet with Governor Healy uh, about two weeks ago in our office around health equity issues. A small delegation of us went in. And we were, one of the things I said to her as we were meeting with her, I said, you are who you hire. Right? If you're waiting to see what a mayor, a governor, or someone does, the first thing you should pay attention to is not the policy stuff they do. Pay attention to who they hire. Uh, and I can tell you across the Commonwealth, uh, many of us are excited about who Lieutenant Governor uh, Driscoll and, and Governor Healy hired. Uh, one of those that we're excited about is our Secretary of Health and Human Services. When you think about these issues of access, affordability, quality, health equity, you want someone in those jobs who actually understand what it's like to serve those communities, communities like Brockton, people of color, poor communities, 
like the congressman and I grew up in. And uh, they appointed in January our Secretary of Health and Human Services, uh, Kate Walsh, uh, who ran, uh, the, she was CEO of the Boston Medical Center. And just for folks who may not have a, a centering around what that work in, uh, involved, BMC Health System includes Boston Medical Center, a not-for-profit academic medical center, the region's largest safety net hospital, a WellSense health, health Plan, a Medicaid managed care organization, and Boston Health Net, a network affiliation of community health centers throughout Boston. She knows, has worked with, supported, uh, and guided many of the health centers in Boston as well. So we are very thankful uh, with the work that this secretary is doing already and will do going forward. Give a round of applause for our secretary of health and Thank you, Michael, and I really uh, thank you for all the kind words. I really want to start off with a quick thank you to Sue Joss and the spectacular Brockton team. Give yourselves another round of applause. And of course, to Michael Curry and his colleagues from the League who are here today, and for their relentless, I will say relentless, <laughs> pursuit of this, uh, of this very important initiative. Um, to our colleagues in the legislature, this we would not be here today without you. So thank you so much to you and your colleagues for this incredible uh, support for our health care, for our healthcare industry. And of course, it's really my honor and privilege to work for Lieutenant Governor and Governor who get this and help me every single day uh, stabilize and support the health and human services workforce across the state. Um, you know, I think that uh, every, you know, there's this uh, Russell Long quote about everything's been said, but not everyone has said it. And I've learned a few things in state government, which is never follow the LG in a speech, because she always says it was such like warmth and depth and never looks at her notes. And I'm like, oh, brother. But, um, <laughs> but, but here, I'm going to do my best, because I, I really do think that the most important thing that we can do right now is create this workforce pipeline, stabilize the people who are doing the great work, so that the, the wonderful health and human services um, safety net or, or support system that we built across the state can continue. That exists on people. Nobody who works in healthcare, you, you can't work remotely, you can't, you can't log in from Starbucks. You're here taking care of our patients, and we so appreciate the work that you do. Um, and, and many, many people in healthcare have crushing debt. I mean, the debt that, 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 that young residents face or a social worker faces, particularly against their earning potential, is really staggering. So this loan repayment, which not only helps people stabilize their lives, stabilize their families, maybe they can buy a house someday, all of that, it also, but it also keeps them working in the communities that they've come to love, with the patients they've come to love and respect and support, and it's really, it's really, it's really just remarkable. You know, I have healthcare providers in my family as well, and I, I know how hard this work is. You know, I kind of joke, I know enough medicine to be dangerous, so please don't take medical advice from me. I do offer it freely, but, 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 um, but um, I'm really here today and my, my, uh, to introduce uh, some experts who have taken the time to, uh, to, uh, to, get, to uh, get the extra training that they need to take really good care of people. And it's really my honor to, you know, you've heard the macro numbers, you've heard how much the legislature invested, you've heard how much work and technical support the league did to provide these loan payments. Now you're gonna hear what it means in real life to real people. So I have the honor of introducing three recipients. The first is Kara Powell, who's worked as a nurse here since 2020. So that was a good year to start, uh, working as a nurse here at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Um, and in, in January of 23, she earned a degree in nursing from Curry College, and now she works mainly with adult patients. She's a little nervous about speaking today. I said, just say what you would think about what you'd say to somebody like me, who every time they get their blood pressure taken, it gets high. So, <laughs> so um, Linda Alvarez is a social worker here at Boston Neighborhood, uh, Brockton, sorry. I worked at BMC for a long time, so I say Boston a lot, sorry, at Brockton Neighborhood Community Health Center. She's Haitian, and her work um, focuses primarily on low income and immigrant populations, and she's a committed advocate for health equity and social justice. And Michael McDonald, he's also a social worker. He serves as the lead clinician for the Health Center's Outpatient Behavioral Health Program. He's been at the Health Center for five years, and he's committed to the Community Health Center movement with a special interest in LGBTQ 
plus care and health and trauma and reform care. So uh, these three members applied for loan, loan repayment back in January. I think I heard from Michael every single week, Kate, is it done, is it done? <laughs> <laughs> for since then, um, along with almost 3,000 other people across the state, and they've just been notified that their applications were, were accepted. I'm so thrilled to hand it over to Linda Kara and Michael to shed some insight on loan repayments. Come on up, thank you. <laughs> um, well, I am very honored to receive this award, and I, this is why I don't like talking because I get emotional. I'm a crier, so <laughs> I'm going to stop. <laughs> stop. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Lieutenant Governor and the Secretary of Health and Human Services, our state representatives. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you um, to the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers and Michael Curry. Um, for administering the mass repay program, and thank you to its funders. Um, my name is Kara, and I'm an RN here at Broughton Neighborhood Health Center. Um, the mass repay program award is meaningful to me because I feel like the efforts I made to become a nurse and continuing my education during several hardships and taking the road less traveled by committing myself to serving and taking on the role of um, serving vulnerable populations in the community since the start of my nursing career. I just feel like it has finally been rewarded and for that I'm grateful. Um, just to give some information about who I am and um, what brought me here because I think that is something that I should share. Um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, luckily, that's not a code, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, um, uh, someone had, I have lived with a chronic disease actually my entire life. It's an endocrine disorder. I'm not going to get into all of that, but um, I have learned as someone with a chronic disease um, and through some of my difficult experiences just the importance of having health care access and quality care, uh, especially in primary settings and community settings. Um, I am also a sepsis survivor. Um, I am a sepsis awareness advocate. Um, this came on because when I approached my second month of nursing school in 2018, I became septic and I was in the ICU for about a week. Uh, that wasn't the best way to start my nursing journey, journey of education. Um, but after being discharged from the hospital, uh, even though I still was not quite back to myself, I returned to class immediately because I felt even more motivated to keep pursuing my goal of becoming a nurse. I obtained my associates in nursing degree from Massasoit Community College in May of 2020 during the pandemic. and. Um, when the pandemic first started, I volunteered providing education on COVID-19 prevention and social distancing to the homeless in Central United Methodist Church parking lot uh, right over there. And I was actually a pianist and organist there growing up um, as I grew up in Brockton. Um, <laughs> um, I felt compelled to work with the homeless because it occurred to me how much more vulnerable um, this population became during the pandemic. Um, as we know, the homeless population here was hit very hard um, during the pandemic. And um, there was a lot of work that was done um, through our um, city to try to combat that. Um, I learned more about Broughton Neighborhood Health Center during the pandemic because I found out that I could refer homeless down to this facility for COVID testing and all sorts of different resources. Um, immediately after graduating from Massasoit, um, I unfortunately had to provide end-of-life care for a family member. And after this service, my chronic disease became uncontrolled which I believe was due to stress and lack of resources during the pandemic. As I worked on re-regulating my disease, I studied for my NCLEX still, which was kind of 
weird because <laughs> I don't I don't know how I did that, but I still obtained my RN license um, in a timely manner. I passed in the 60 questions and on my first try, and um, <laughs> um, as soon as I felt well again, I started my first nursing job, and this was actually in a home that was built through a collaboration between a community a nonprofit organization, um, Mass Health, the state, and donated land. Um, and this home was actually built for uh, young adults who had severe neurological and developmental disorders, and they required total care. And uh, during, especially during the pandemic, this was um, really uh, important to keep them out of the hospital. Um, and I became very passionate, but compassionate about the importance of healthcare access for vulnerable populations, um, as I knew my patients and their families' quality of life would not be the same without community collaboration. Um, I worked on obtaining my bachelor's degree in nursing from Curry College um, starting in January, uh, I, I believe it was, yeah, 2021. And during this first nursing position, um, I f actually faced loss as many other people did during the pandemic. Um, but in ways that were not necessarily directly um, from COVID. Um, so I lost two friends I grew up with, one from cancer and the other from, uh, to the opioid crisis. And at one point, my father was also hospitalized with COVID, which was very scary. Uh, luckily, he was okay. He was released and he's okay. Um, but, you know, there was always that fear of me getting him sick again from my work. Um, both for my education my, and my collection of experiences and seeing the effects of the pandemic on the healthcare system and communities, it became even more clear to me that our healthcare system has been working backwards and that we need to focus on increasing access to substance abuse services, primary care services, mental health services, and so much more within communities and change the focus of healthcare towards accessible quality care. While obtaining my BSN, I did a research project on the community of Brockton, and I saw just how much of a vital resource Brockton Neighborhood Health Center is and has been for providing healthcare access for many underserved populations in Brockton and other areas. After graduating with my bachelor's degree in nursing, I decided to apply to Brockton Neighborhood for a position because I felt we had a lot of the same values and I wanted to serve vulnerable populations in my community. As an RN at Brockton Neighborhood, I play an important role in providing quality care. Nurses are increasingly important in primary care in community settings. Um, a lot of this is because of the number of patients living with chronic diseases uh, that is rising and patient populations continue to increase. The cost of education leads many providers to seek employment um, in more specialty environments instead of primary care positions or community health settings, and the patient to primary care provider ratio continues to just keep increasing. And um, the effects of the pandemic has also heightened strain on primary care services and so much more. So um, this leaves a lot of providers with a large patient load and less time to spend with patients. And at a, the cost is a lack of quality care and not through their fault of their own. It's just, that's just how um, taxed we are right now. Um, so uh, through a team-based approach um, at Brockton Neighborhood Health, um, I sort of su support um, so that we can maintain that quality care initiative um, and improving health care access. Uh, so through a team-based approach, I will work with a standing order process and I ensure routine labs, screenings, dental exams, eye exams and vaccinations are ordered and provided. Um, many of the patients we serve also have um, low health literacy um, and we have a large immigrant population. Um, so extra time is definitely needed with uh, patients for education and that is where our nurse education appointments come in to play here at Brockton Neighborhood Health. Um, Many of our patients face language barriers that result in health disparities. Uh, so I ensure patients have access to education that they can actually understand in their language, um, uh, visuals, uh, all of those things. We get creative. Um, 
one of the biggest ways I empower patients is through improving their health literacy because that is honestly the number one way that you can improve people's health. Um, I learn about each patient and identify their needs and provide indiv individualized patient care and education. I teach patients how to navigate the healthcare system, educate patients on disease prevention, how to self-manage their conditions, such as hypertension and diabetes, um, through therapeutic diet, exercise, addressing substance use and stress. Um, I teach patients about their conditions, outcome risks, and provide monitoring and support to improve patients' own self-monitoring and self-management. I improve patient safety by reconciling medications and teaching patients um, basically um, all about their medications, what they're for, how to take them, and adverse effects to monitor for. A lot of things that we take advantage of when you are not, um, when you only speak English, um, you know, when you're speaking another language, this is very difficult to do, and it's, it's, it really can really just cause a lot of safety issues for patients. So it's very important, um, and our, our pharmacy here has done a great job at um, coming up with, uh, you know, different ways that we can, um, you know, making sure that we have instructions in their, their language, and um, we also have special packaging now for pills, um, which is great. Um, I also physically assess patients and consult with providers and patients for a plan of care and identify patients' social needs. And I coordinate with other team members to address housing insecurity, transportation insecurity, financial insecurity, food insecurity, and many um, other needs such as mental health needs that are impacting patient health. Um, I'm just very grateful for the Mass Repay Program, not only because of how this affects me directly, but because I believe this program can help redirect healthcare professionals to where they are needed most, which is directly in the community. Um, serving vulnerable populations is where medicine originated, and um, I think this is kind of a great way for us to kind of refocus our healthcare system back to the basics. Um, I also believe this program can help professionals um, go back to that fundamental purpose of healthcare that brought them to become health professionals in the first place. Um, and oftentimes that gets lost in other care settings. Research has shown that when nurses align themselves with an organization with similar values as their own, their risk for burnout and turnover decreases. So I encourage more nurses to consider working in com community health centers. I'm looking forward to continuing my commitment to serving others in my community. Um, I thank Brockton Neighborhood for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this team and my team members at Brockton Neighborhood Health. I can't do pretty much any of my work without them. <laughs> um, and uh, again, I thank the Massachusetts League of Community Health uh, Centers and everyone who has made the Mass Repay Program possible, our legislators, state representatives, um, everybody, just thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hola a todos, yo soy Mac McDonald y um, voy a hablar en español por esta conferencia. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, hello, good morning everyone. Good morning to my BNHC family. Good morning to BNHC staff. Um, and thank you all so much for being here. And first, I would just like to express my extreme, extreme appreciation for all of the kind words that have been said uh, and all of the support that we have received from Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, from Congressman Lynch, from um, Secretary Walsh, sorry guys, <laughs> and from President uh, Michael Curry and Mayor Sullivan, and of course, Sue. Um, I'll start by introducing myself uh, and just speaking a little bit about myself. Um, and then I'll start with a question after that. So again, my name is Michael McDonald. I am the lead behavioral health outpatient clinician here at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. I am a open and proud 
um, queer, non-binary individual, um, and I do the work that I do for my community. Um, I do it for not only all of the queer people out there who need access to health care, but I do it for all of the members of Brockton and the surrounding towns. And Um, I received my bachelor's in psychology from UMass Lowell and my master's in social work from Simmons University. Uh, I am a licensed independent clinical social worker in the state of Massachusetts. Um, and Maria Celli had asked me a question uh, to really start off uh, the speech, which is, what does this mean to you? Oh boy. Um, I'm not entirely sure I can fully express what the MA Repay program means. Um, but as I do with my thought process, I usually answer a question with another question. Um, and so what I often found myself going to is, would I be in this field doing work that I love without programs such as Mass Repay? And the answer is, Probably not. And the reason why is because I probably couldn't afford it. Um, the price of education, the cost of education, is incredibly prohibitive for many. And so I walked into my field. I walked into my master's program already knowing about resources like the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, as well as other resources and state programs that are here to help our workers and our healthcare um, workforce. So I already knew walking in that I wasn't going to be able to commit to paying the price of my education. Programs like Mass Repay have not only allowed me to enter into a field that I love and am highly skilled in, but have also allowed me to stay in this field in spite of things like inflation, COVID, day-to-day -day expenses, and debt that quite frankly is even too much for Atlas to carry. <clears throat> Prior to hearing the news like uh, last week, I, like many others, was faced with difficult decisions to make as student loan payments resume. The Mass Repay program has allowed me to confidently create a plan that will allow me to make those student loan obligations that I have currently. So that way when I'm working in clinic, my attention can be fully focused on what it needs to be. My patients, my community, and my clinic. When I'm not in clinic, I also get to focus more on the things that bring me joy and happiness in the present and in the future, like a wedding and a house. I want to recognize that the Mass League and the state of Massachusetts are not only investing in their workforce, but by investing in their workforce, they are reinvesting in communities that need it. You've heard the data yourself today. You've heard the data about how many, uh, what percentage of recipients are people of color. Think about all the data that we might not be talking about or we might not know. How many people are other members of minority groups such as the queer community, such as those who are differently abled? We don't have that data, but it's probably big. And so this is a reinvestment in our communities of color, in our queer communities, in our differently abled communities, and also in those communities that suffer the most, those who are impacted significantly by low, economic, low socioeconomic status and are prohibited from any social mobility. So thank you again for reinvesting in me and my work so that way I can invest in myself and those I serve.
So again, when it's an opportunity. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three, no. you, can, one, one, you can do my speech. No, so I'm kidding. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good thank morning. you. Good thank morning. you. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm also emotional, so bear with me. I just want to say again, good morning to our wonderful BNH staff. Um, you know, our lieutenant governor, thank you so much. Um, our congressmen, representatives, um, and Kate, uh, our Secretary of Health and Human Services. Thank you guys all for being here. It's an honor to have you all here today to celebrate this marvelous occasion, an occasion that I have prayed and hoped for for many years. My name is Linda Alvarez. I'm a clinical social worker, both in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And I'm specifically a behavioral health clinician here at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. This month actually makes it three years of me being here. I also started in 2020. Um, and it's such an amazing place to serve our patients and grow as a clinician. I am overjoyed to be an awardee for the Massachusetts Repayment Program. And I'd like to thank Mass League for creating this opportunity for social workers like me to con continue to press forward in this field at BNHC. Over nine years ago, I desired to become a social worker, to make social change while providing mental and emotional support and empowerment in as many communities with as many people as I possibly could. And if you know me, you know I will not stop <laughs> helping as many people as I physically can. I'm happy to say that that desire is fervently alive in my social work co career. And it continues to be what fuels the fire to go above and beyond for my patients right here at BNHC. Recently, I went back to the personal statement I wrote um, when applying to the Boston College School of Social Work. Just to remind myself, you know, of the dreams I had set for myself years ago. In 2015, I wrote, quote, my hope is to work in a town or city to continue my passion of serving those in need in Massachusetts. I'm happy that Brockton is that city where I continue to fulfill my passion with many patients and staff that I have the pleasure of working al alongside with every week. With joy, I'm excited to say that I will wholeheartedly serve my patients for years to come and assess and prepare for my personal dreams for the years to come. I think Mass League for helping us as providers be seen and acknowledged through this repayment program. By taking the stress and worry of student loan debt away and allowing us to prioritize, uh, allowing us as providers to refocus our attention daily on the fantastic work we do in our health centers to pr prioritize and improve patient care while we as providers seek to achieve our personal goals and dreams. I, for one, am able to say that because of this repayment program, that I can truly focus on my future dreams as a provider and person. My dream is to keep this passion alive for even more years by serving minority, underprivileged, underserved populations, and even more towns through my private practice in Word Journey Therapy, which is also in Rhode Island. It is because of this opportunity that I find this to be more than a dream come true. For me, this is an answered prayer that opens so many opportunities to expand my love 
of helping as many people in need and gives my wonderful family and I the opportunity to dream and accomplish other goals we previ previously placed on hold. I would like to thank <clears throat> BNHC and CEO Sue Joss. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I would like to thank BNHC and CEO Sue Josh for making sure that we were informed and reminded about the mass repayment program with her many email reminders. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to my manager, Claudia Souza, and my behavioral health a patient therapy team for being so supportive in so many ways, you have no idea the impact you all consistently have on me to help me become a better me and a clinical social worker. A very special thank you to all my patients for trusting me, for staying alongside you on your transformative journey and last but not least, thank you to my husband, who's here in the back. <laughs> For being my biggest supporter and cheerleader everywhere, every step of the way. My son for reminding me to find joy in all that I do. My mother, family, and friends for all your prayers and hopeful hearts. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Linda. I had a, a flashback to uh, my sisters trying to teach me double Dutch. <laughs> and I would jump in too soon, so I jumped in too soon. Um, so I want to, a few things. One is when you do this policy work, like the folks that are here at the front of the room do, um, a lot of times what people don't realize is the personal connection that the policy has to people's lives. So I want to stress that as you heard emotional I'll call it testimony from Kara, Michael, and Linda. This actually makes a difference, right? Because one of the things I learned in all the COVID task forces I served on, I think I served on every task force known to man and woman <laughs> during COVID, was that we found out that we didn't have the workforce to meet the crisis. Then we also found out that we didn't have the diverse workforce to meet the crisis. We're talking about lived experience that you just heard, right? the struggle that Kara shared about how she got into that profession or, or Michael's story or Linda's story and how important it is that we don't create, we, don't, we eliminate barriers that keep people from their greatness. That is not just about them, it's about the next time you get sick or someone in your family gets sick, that they're there to meet you and to provide care for you. So I don't want us to walk away from this as this sort of policy conversation or the dollars without realizing this really makes a difference in the lives of people. Um, I want to, before we close out, um, the Secretary mentioned it, Lieutenant Governor mentioned it, um, a tremendous amount of work has gone into this announcement and this work, uh, in large part by the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers, and I'm here as the CEO of the League, but I'm honored to serve some phenomenal staff, so I want to ask them to stand up so we can give them a round of applause. Diana Rane, Kristen Barnacle, Joe, David, Miko, El Resto, Estate, everybody. <laughs> I can't overstate that there's been some sleepless nights, some stress, yeah. <laughs> to make sure that this thing was launched and done successfully. Uh, so they deserve a tremendous amount of credit. So again, to our Lieutenant Governor, to Governor Healy, oh. and Mayor. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, uh, I would like you to provide some marks of love. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. I, first of all, I want to say uh, welcome to the City of Champions. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor. I want to thank the Governor. Uh, I met Kim when she was Mayor of Salem. Her and Marty Walsh were uh, mentors when I became Mayor of the City of Brockton. So I want to thank you for what you do and what you have done and what you will continue to do. I want to thank the Congressman. Uh, Steve Lynch is the best Congressman in the United States of America, and I say that because that's a fact. 
He was the first one to come to the city of Brockton when we had our first death, and we lost 537 residents to the deadly virus. So, Stephen, thank you for what you do each and every day. I want to thank uh, the secretary. Kay Walsh came to Brockton uh, and opened up the BMC on Pearl Street, the old Braemar Nursing Home, because she understood that there was a need uh, to collaborate with the other health care providers here in the city of Brockton, but also mental health and behavioral health was uh, exasperated by, by COVID. So thank you, Secretary, for taking a leap of faith and joining the administration. <laughs> Mike Curry is a Brockton resident. He doesn't have to live in the city of Brockton. He can live anywhere in the Commonwealth. The guy is unbelievable. And he wasn't lying to you. He would have jumped in the water and swam here today if he needed to. <laughs> He is, uh, he is someone that I call a friend, but he is an advocate each and every day for 351 municipalities in our Commonwealth. So thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> so again, we have the city of Brockton, city of champions, of course our gov and our lieutenant governor of basketball players. Uh, we talk about the big three, right? Celtics, right? You talk about Parrish, McHale, and you talk about pa uh, Bird, right? Those are the big three. In Brockton, we have the big four. And we have the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. We have the VA hospital. We have Brockton Hospital Signature, we have Good Sam. And uh, I became mayor, I'm not medically trained at all. My, my mom's a registered nurse, uh, so I grew up in, the, in a household my mom uh, saved lives. My wife Maria is a physician assistant, spent 14 years in the ER at Brockton Hospital. But what I did know at the onset of COVID, I became mayor six weeks before the pandemic reared its ugly heads, is that we are better together. So we need to collaborate, we have to collaborate. And one of the first persons that I called to come to City Hall was Sue Joss. I wanna thank you, Sue, for what you do each and every day. So when, when, when Kara mentions uh, our homeless population, I'm the mayor of everybody. Those that have a roof over their heads and those that don't. And we knew it was gonna run rampant in our homeless population. And so Brockton Neighborhood Health Center volunteered. I remember it, I talked to Sue, I talked to Maria Celli. I said, what are we gonna do? And they said, we have a team in place. We're gonna to go to Father Bill's Mainspring. We're gonna save lives. And we knew we weren't gonna save every lives, but if we didn't collaborate, and it was here, right? This is, this is the point guard of our team right here, uh, Neighborhood Health Center. If we didn't do it, that 537 would have been well over 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000. So um, when we talk about Neighborhood Health Center being a special place in the heart of the city of Brockton, it's the people that work here each and every day. It's the clinicians, but it's also a custodial staff and administrative staff and security staff. It's everybody working together. So when we heard the, the three recipients today talk about it's a life-changing award that they're receiving, life-changing but they are lifesavers. So when we talk about Brockton, we could talk about Southie or we could talk about Salem. We're all on the same team here. But what I can say, without the efforts of Beacon Hill and the state delegation and the governor and lieutenant governor, and of course our friends in Washington, D.C., all of us are in the people business. So if we were a congressman or a lieutenant governor or a secretary or Michael Curry or a CEO, we're in the people business. But we have a charge to do. Right? I don't have it in my fabric to put my life on the line during the pandemic like these people did. They came to work, they put a mask on, rolled up the sleeves, had an eye on the prize, get it done, let's go. And they knew going home at night, and Kara mentioned about her dad, they could have brought home that deadly virus. Their loved ones could have died because of their work, but they knew it was their God-given right to go to work every day and make sure they save lives, and they did it well, they did it exceptionally well. And again, today, today, today is a proud day for Neighborhood Health Center, but I would say that it's a proud day for our Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We have always been at the forefront, always been at the forefront. The city of Brockton has always been at the forefront. Thomas Edison was here for two years, here in Brockton. First electrified fire station right down the street on Pleasant Street. First electrified movie theater was literally around the corner. So Brockton has always been at the forethought of where we should be taking it. But I will tell you right now, Charlie Baker and Karen Polito were exceptional friends of the city of Brockton during the pandemic. And now we have Mara and we have Kim. It's passing it on, they hit the ground running. But we can't forget that it starts in Washington and goes to Beacon Hill and then comes to City Hall. So I wanna thank everybody for what you do. The best is yet to come for our Commonwealth and our City of Champions. God bless all of you and congratulations.